Welcome back to another learning series with Mr. Knight. Today's lesson will be on covalent bonding. However, for this lesson, I am focusing on covalent bonding by using the same non-metal. Definitely, my friends, in the next lesson, I will be doing covalent bonding by using different nonmetals, and that will be something for you to look forward to. Now, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to draw structures like these and at least know how to name a few covalent compounds. Before I go into the examples, I want to deal with some fundamentals. The first thing I want to focus on is how to define covalent bonding. So covalent bonding involves the sharing of valence electrons between non-metals. So what you need to take away from this is that electrons are shared and they are shared between non-metals. Very important for you to note. The other concept is that for this type of bonding, you need to know the number of valence electrons you are working with. The other thing is that you also need to know the amount of electrons needed to achieve an octet, which means the number of electrons needed to complete the valence shell or to make that valence shell satisfied with the maximum number of electrons. Now, let's jump into some, some examples. The first example I want to look at is bonding fluorine and fluorine. The first step is always to establish the number of valence electrons. First to note is that fluorine has nine electrons. Therefore, the electron configuration is two and seven, making the valence electrons seven. Now, once you establish the valence electron, you can draw the atoms that are required. Now, we are working with two fluorines. So once you draw the two atoms, each atom must contain seven electron, which is the valence electron. There is no need to draw the other shells. We're only looking at the valence shell. So this fluorine on the left contains seven. The fluorine on the right also contains seven. Now they're in color code, so you can easily follow and understand without making any mistake. Now, I want you to notice something. To complete each fluorine orbital or the valence shell, each fluorine requires one more electron to become eight. Now, what will you do? The fluorine on the left must give up one electron to the fluorine on the right. The fluorine on the right must also give up one electron to the fluorine on the left. So notice what will happen when we put them together. Now the electrons are now joined. And notice one electron was given up by the fluorine on the left. And another electron was given up by the fluorine on the right. So in this bonding space, there are two electrons. Now, you can now check the number of electrons around this orbital and the number of electrons around this orbital. For this orbital, you have two, four, six, and eight valence electrons around this orbital. Around this other orbital on the right, you have two, four, six, and these two that are shared between both are also on this orbital. Therefore means both atoms are completely filled, hence the bonding is completed. Now, 
For this bonding, we use two fluorine atoms, making the formula F2, which is the fluorine gas, or otherwise called the fluorine molecule. Now, let's jump into another example. This time, we are bonding oxygen and oxygen. First, they establish the valence electrons. Oxygen has eight electrons. Therefore, the electron configuration is two and six, making the valence electrons six. Now, let's draw our atoms. So, each atom of oxygen must contain six electrons. Now, the next thing is to establish how many electrons are needed by each atom to be completely filled. If each atom has six, it therefore means each atom will need two more electrons to be completely filled. So what will happen in this case is that the oxygen atom on the left will give up two electrons to the one on the right. Likewise, the one on the right will give up two electrons to the one on the left. So when you put them together, notice what will happen. Two electrons from each atom are combined within the bonding space. Now we can count the number of electrons on each orbital. Notice right here, you have two, four, and these four making eight around this orbital. The orbital on the right, you have two, four, and these four making eight. Now, to complete this bond, there are two atoms of oxygen. So, this is oxygen gas or the oxygen molecule. Now, this is very important for us to breathe and also to make our energy in our bodies. Now, let's look at our next example. Now, we're bonding nitrogen and nitrogen we're going to establish the valence electron so nitrogen has seven electrons therefore the electron configuration is two and five therefore making the valence electron five now let's draw our atoms so each atom of nitrogen must has five electrons. Now, once we establish that, we need to now figure out how many electrons are needed by each atom. Since there are five valence electrons, it therefore means that each atom will need three more electrons to become eight. So what will happen in this case? This atom on the left will give up three electrons to the one on the right. Likewise, the one on the right will give up three electrons to the one on the left. Now, let's put them together. Now, they are together. And notice the three electrons that were given up from each atom. They are in the bonding space. And so, therefore, means now, if you check the number of electrons on each orbital, you will realize that you have two plus these six, making eight electrons. Same thing on the right, two electrons plus these six will make it eight electrons around this orbital. Now, there's something to note at this point is that the electrons that are within this bonding space, they are called bonding pairs. So, for example, within nitrogen, there are one, two, three pairs. So, there are three bonding pairs. The electrons that do not take part in the bonding and are found outside of that bonding section, they are called lone pairs. So, each nitrogen atom has one lone pair, but there are three bonding pairs. And you could go back to the video in terms of rewinding and look at the other atoms that we have looked at and those compound and count the number of bonding pairs and lone pairs as an addition to this lesson. Now, the formula for this 
compound will be N2 and this is the nitrogen gas or the nitrogen molecule. Now before I close this lesson, I'm going to show you another concept because I'm definitely not finished with you yet. Now, this what we're going to do is determine the types, the types of bond formed during covalent bonding. This will be easy, simple, and we'll finish very soon. So, there are three possible bonds that can be, for that can be formed during covalent bonding. One is called a single bond, and a single bond is simply a pair of electrons. Notice, single one pair of electrons. That pair of electron can be represented also with just a single line. The other type of bond will be our double bond. Double bond means two pairs of bonding electrons. Or it could be written as two lines. The other bond will be our triple bond, which means three pairs of bonding electrons. And so it can also be written as three lines. So notice that the type of bonds depending on the number of bonding pairs. So one bonding pair is a single bond. Two bonding pairs is a double bond. Three bonding pairs will give you a triple bond. And notice the number of lines as well. As the name suggests, single, double, and triple. Now let's look at our compounds we formed earlier to see what type of bonds were formed between them. So fluorine and fluorine resulted in only one bonding pair and many lone pairs. Notice the lone pairs on the outside. So each atom has three lone pairs and there's one bonding pair. So the bonding pair is what determines the bond. So notice that one pair. So it can also be written as F and F single bond. So that is a single bond between the two fluorine atoms. Let's look at the next example which is oxygen and oxygen. Notice the number of lone pairs on each atom. There are two lone pairs but we are concerned about the bonding pairs. So notice the number of bonding pairs. There's one here and there's the next one there. So there are two bonding pairs. Therefore means that now we can write our formula or a structural formula as O2 double bond. So there's a double bond between the two oxygen atom. Let's look at our last example. Nitrogen and nitrogen. The number of lone pairs will only be one lone pair for each atom of nitrogen. But there are three bonding pairs. So therefore means we have a what? Triple bond. And so the formula, which in terms of the structural formula, will be nitrogen, bond to nitrogen with, with a triple bond. This was very exciting, folks, to be with you today. And I hope you learn a lot. And I hope you now can draw covalent structures. And you will now start having fun in making these compounds. So, folks, again, I'm looking forward to see you in the other lesson. And remember, the next lesson will be covalent bonding by using different nonmetals. Definitely, you do not want to miss that one. See you soon.